I don't care about what's happening in her life. I don't care about correcting her. My only objective is to be likable so I can crack her eggs and send her out the door. The Next Door Podcast. Welcome back to The Next Door Podcast. I am Bestie Next Door, and I'm like your bestie next door. If you like your tea to be extra, extra sweet, then this place is not for you. Because we like our tea to be sweet and bitter. Sweet enough that it goes down, bitter enough to wake us up. Guys, y'all know what time it is. I don't, I'm not opening no new bottles. I already have this. I've been sipping a little bit while I was getting ready. I'm like, I need to get a little sip, sip, sip so I don't forget anything. And plus, I want to be on my demon time. Mm. I already know I told you I'm a two cup red cup girl. Two cup red cup girl. Guys, if y'all don't see my comment section on Instagram, it's it's looking like the devil's playground, honestly to tell you. So much men have so much things to say about what I say because I'm saying the truth and I'm putting women on. So they be so upset like, oh my God, that we I can't spend on a woman like this, blah, 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 blah. But 30% of my followers are men. Make it make sense. They try to troll me, but I'm the biggest troll. Because you know the thing is, is that a lot of content creators and people who make content, they be so invested in what people think. But I sincerely, in my whole heart, because if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is best next door underscore. I always post like when I'm trolling someone back in my comment section, I always post it in my story. I sincerely, in my heart, do not give a F what anyone has to think about me or what I have to say. You're not paying my bills. You're not sucking my coochie. You're not penetrating my coochie. You're not my man. I don't care. <laughs> just the, in just that order. I don't. I don't even care. So they don't know that I'm the biggest trolls of trolls. You try to troll me, I will troll you harder. I will have you thinking about your whole existence because they like to say things to me like, "Oh, black woman, black American," and I'm like, "Hold on." Yes, I am black, but I'm African. Perspective I'm coming from, I don't have to over explain to an African man or a Caribbean man about traditional roles because they already understand. This is something that they already know. They already know like, okay, we have to provide, we have to do make sure, they already know this. But it's always, I, it's just so amusing to me that it's always black American men. And it's disgusting. And I'm like, I would, you're talking about, oh, I wouldn't spend a dollar on you. I would never even date you. I wouldn't even look your way. Half of these men that have so much things to say in my comment section, if they were to see me in person, they'll be all over me like white on rice if they were to see me in person. So when I be seeing these people trolling on Instagram, and they, I'm pretty sure half of them, if they see me, they're like, oh, I saw your little post or whatever. They'll want to flirt, but whatever. This episode, we're talking about dating high value men and just finding high value men. We're just talking about, it's, it's over, you know, my episodes, when I'm on this American Honey and Red Bull, you guys know I always bounce from topic to topic. I really wanna to talk to you guys about just being that girl. This is what we're gonna talk about, being that girl, being the girl that's living the life that she wants, being that girl that attracts the guys she wants. Cause I actually had a conversation and I wanna jump right into it because some of you that have me on Instagram, a week or two ago, I actually posted this same recording on my Instagram story. He's from the UK and he had a lot to say about UK women. So I want all my UK girlies to tap in and my girls from America, wherever you are in the world, listening to me right now, I need you to really listen to this and apply it to your life because it's so, so important because half of the things that I say to you guys, it just goes to show you that I tell you guys the truth. A lot of people don't like the things I say because I say the truth and I'm not sitting here saying things because I want to go viral. I just somehow go viral because of the things I say, but I don't have the intent in my head like I'm going to start chatting bullshit because I want to go viral. I don't have have that intent so a lot of things that I tell you guys is really the truth like a lot of you want masculine men but you're not soft you don't know how to cater to a man you don't know how to you know be welcoming to a man and this is something that he said UK girlies are not soft UK girls complain about men being cheap but they act like the men and they are not soft this is what he's saying I'm not saying it so I feel like like, you know, most of the time, us women, we want, 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 but we never look in the mirror and say, you know what, am I deserving of what I want? He also talked about taking a girl to a, a networking event full of millionaires and billionaires and them not knowing what to say and how to package themselves well. This is why I tell you guys, package yourself very well. Know what and how to say what you do for a living. You don't want to just go to an event and be like, oh yeah, um, I'm a content creator. Like I would never, I would never, and I wanna use myself as an example, I would never go to a networking event with full of millionaires and billionaires. You got big stretch, big stretch, big stretch. You guys know Bougie always wants to be a guest on the podcast. He wants to show himself. He wants you guys to see that he's sleeping and he's comfortable. But anyways, I would never go to 
a networking event full of millionaires and billionaires and say, oh, I'm a content creator or I'm a podcaster. I would never, I wouldn't say, oh, I have my own podcast. I would never open my mouth and say that. This is what I would say. They ask you, oh, what do you do? I would be like, oh, I'm a digital entrepreneur. I run an online business that caters to North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Sweet. Sweet and to the point. They'd be like, oh, that sounds good. Oh, blah, blah, blah. How did you, what, you, what kind of products do you create? Then I can now say, oh, you know, I have ebooks. I have my own podcast. You know, I also create content. Then I can go into detail about what it is I do because I wouldn't want someone to automatically think because I'm a content creator, I have only fans. And I want to also tap into that before I even get into the main gist of this whole, this whole episode. A lot of you don't understand this. A lot of people looking to be a content creator because you want brand deals, they're not paying that much. You got to get it out the mud. You got to figure out how you can do what you love to do, which would be if you want to be an influencer, be an influencer while making money on the side. This is why I'm telling you guys, and I'm not, I'm not pushing it to you guys. I'm suggesting it and telling you because I know by the ending of this year, the same digital marketing thing I've been telling you guys about, I've been talking about, you guys are going to see it all over your timeline by the ending of this year. Mark my words. And you're going to be like, damn, when Bestie was telling me about investing in this digital marketing course, I should have did it then. Now it's like, damn, it's too overpriced. It's this, is this is that it's going to be too much while the wave is early just like how people were late with forex think about forex and drop shipping think about the people who actually sat there and said you know what i'm going to take i'm going to take a drop shipping course because i really want to understand drop sh shipping and be successful at it think about the people that said you know what i want to take a forex course because i want to be successful at forex and cryptocurrencies Think about all those people and how they actually made a million dollars. Now, think about how you missed that wave and tried to get on when it was too late. Now it's early. Invest in a digital marketing course. It will literally teach you all the digital skills you need to make money. And it's something you can use to package yourself online, offline, even in interviews. When you go on interviews, you'll be like, oh, I'm a, they say, oh, what are some other side skills you have? You can say, I'm a digital marketer. Now you're an asset to a company because you, you know how to market digital products. You know how to market physical products and digital products. Let me tell you guys something. I say this all the time on my Bam Not Bestie um, TikTok. Followers do not equal money. Popularity does not equal money. Marketing does. And when you master marketing, as an individual, you will be able to sell anything and you will never be broke because you know how to sell. You know how to sell. Think about this. I'm so good at marketing. I'm pretty sure half of you already tried American Honey. And this is not even a brand deal. I don't have a brand deal with them. But because I'm so good at making you guys like, oh, actually, I do want to try the Red Bull and American Honey Bessie's talking about. Followers do not equal money. Popularity does not equal money. Going viral does not equal money. Marketing does. And you guys need to master digital marketing. You guys need to master the marketing skills. Once you master digital marketing, always be able to make money digitally. Because why? You know how to market your product. Everybody's talking about doing digital products. Everyone's talking about it. But everyone's not understanding that in order for you to actually get customers to your digital store, you have to market. And you don't need to pay for Facebook ads. All the money you want to use to pay for Facebook ads, Invest it in the digital marketing course. Take the digital marketing course and grow organic followers. Get that organic reach. Nothing is better than getting organic reach and organic customers because they're actually going to purchase. You don't want to do Facebook ads and these people on Facebook is just coming, they just come to your store and they're bouncing off. No, you want people that's gonna come to your store and actually purchase. Get the digital marketing course. I'm going to link it in this video. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, just go to any of my social medias. Go to the, the first link in my bio. Finish. Invest. I invested in that same exact course, and I'm telling you right now, I'm running a Faces account right now, and my Faces account is doing very well. If you are the person that don't want to show your face because you like to be private, this course will teach you how to be successful at running a faceless account. Okay. Okay, I wanted to deliver that message to you guys, and I'm always going to still drill it into you guys' head because I actually want you guys to be successful. I know a lot of people always ask me, oh, Bestie, how can I make money outside of having a job? I finally found the solution. This is actually the solution. It's actually worked. You guys know I took a break for like a month, and the reason why I took a break for like a month or so was because I was trying this out to make sure to see if it actually worked. Can you really, do you, would you really make money from this? And you do, because I've actually mastered digital marketing. So now, because I've mastered that as a skill, I can, I have like four Four different faces accounts that I'm running and it generates me income so I'm suggesting it to you guys highly suggesting it to you guys because I want you guys to win I want you guys to be in a wealthy girl era 
I feel like when you start generating a certain amount of money, the level of guys you talk to and what you accept is going to be higher because you know that, okay, well, a $500 and a $1,000, I could literally make that a week. I'm doing that a week on my own with my digital business. So I don't need to be taking that bullshit from this guy because you know the thing with guys is this. Once guys know you need them, like once, okay, we're talking about different level of guys, right? We're talking about different level of guys. When a guy knows you don't have money, he's going to drag you through the mud. If you ask him for $500, because he knows you can't afford it yourself, he's going to say, oh, come to my house. When you come to my house, I'm going to give it to you cash. Oh, come and meet me at a hotel. Come here. Come there. He's going to test your morals just for $500 because he knows you can't provide that for yourself. But when a man knows that you can provide $500 for yourself and it's nothing to you and you're used to a certain lifestyle and because he likes you, he's going to make sure that he provides more for you because he wants to show that he's the masculine man in your life. He wants to be that superman in your life because he's like, oh, this girl, she she can afford $500. She can afford $1,000. I got to show her that I'm needed. I'm beneficial. Men want to feel needed. Hello. And let me tell you guys something. I talked about this on my on my TikTok live, and I want to tell you guys this: what I've realized after being away from podcasting for a month and going out in the field, you know, going out in the field, seeing what's going on. When I tell you that I've met so much wealthy guys, that it it was ridiculous. It was like it was crazy and when i tell you when i'm going out to the club they're giving me stacks of money because of the way i package myself they're giving me stacks of money and do you know what i realize is this if i look like the the broke bitch that don't have money that is like oh i'm looking for a guy to pay my bills or i'm coming to the club because i'm looking for someone and i don't have my shit together they will not respect me and feel like i'm deserving of just dashing money, giving, giving, let me just give her money. She look good. She's with her high value friends. Let me give her money because of the fact that I was with one of my friends, right? One of my friends, two of my friends are actually very popular in like the entertainment industry. One is a huge DJ. The other one's a radio person now. And I'm actually going to post her episode. Not this after this one, I'll post her episode. Me and her did an episode together because these men know that these girls are of status. I mean, when we're going places, we have our own driver, we have our own little security, we have our own, we're packaged very well. They respect us. A lot of girls have this mindset of, oh, well, if a man knows I have money, then he's not going to want to give me money. Those are broke men. Because a man, think about it like this. Why do rich people marry rich? Why do millionaires marry in their class? Why wouldn't a millionaire say, you know what, I'm a millionaire, so let me go for the broke girl? They want to marry in their class because of mindset, because of attitude, because of packaging, because there's certain conversations and there's certain things you're not going to have to over explain. That's what people don't understand. So when people say this thing like, oh, well, if a man knows I have money, he's, he's not going to want to give me money. That's a low class man. A man of status is going to be happy that you have your own money. He's going to want to do more for you. Think about it. A millionaire, think of, like I want us to really, I want you to really meditate and ponder on what I'm saying. Why, if, if, if women who have their own money, if men don't give women who have their own money money, then why is it that millionaire men usually marry within their class? Think about it. Like I said, mindset, energy, there's certain things you're not going to have to explain. This is why I'm telling you guys to get you, when you get yourself to a certain financial status, you're going to attract those type of guys. You're going to attract the wealthy men you guys are asking for, where do I find them? But you can't be operating from here and want a man with money to solve all your problems before you solve your own problems. You have to get yourself to a certain status first, and then you start attracting more men with money and men that want to do more for you that's going to elevate you to the next highest level. But when you're right here and you can't even afford to pay a $200 bill, you can't even afford to get your own hair done, you can't even afford to get your nails done, you're not even knowing what's happening in the world, how do you expect to find a high value man? You don't even know what's going on. Now, if he takes you to an event, how are you going to present yourself? You're going to be operating from a place of lack. You're going to be operating from a place of thirsty because now it's like, oh my God, I'm around so many millionaires. But when you are a six-figure earner, when, you are, when you're confident in your abilities to make money, and when you go to these events full of millionaires, you're not going to be so overly impressed like, oh my God, I'm around millionaires. Oh my God, I need to make sure. Oh my God. Because 
One thing money likes is money. Money likes money and money likes confidence. So when you get around millionaires and you are acting very thirsty, the, your energy shows it. Now they look at you like, oh, well, she doesn't know what she does. Well, clearly, if I gave her 500 or 1000 I'd probably get to lay down with her. Uh, <clears throat> this brings me to my next point that I just want to bring up to you guys. Every man has a price tag they're willing to pay on a woman's head. Every single man. They'll look at you and rate you and say, you know what? I know I can pay her $1,000 and I could crack those eggs. Oh, you know what? I can take her to a nice restaurant, that nice five-star restaurant, because she's not used to eating out nice. She doesn't look like one of those girls that is used to eating out. So if I take her to a nice restaurant, it's going to woo her. And I'm pretty sure that same night I could crack her eggs. Every man, they look at you and they price tag you like, mm, well, she looks like a $1,000 babe. If I give her $1,000... After the second night, she gonna be in my bed. I'ma crack those eggs and send her out the door. If I do a little staycation with her, in that staycation, I'ma crack those eggs. This is why you gotta start bringing yourself. And this, and I want you guys to understand something. It's not about being a boss babe where you have the mindset of you don't need a man. It, it's not that. You get what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's not that. It's more so of I'm used to a certain thing. So a staycation is not gonna impress me because I do staycations every weekend, boo. A thousand dollars is not going to impress me because I can make a band right now in two, three days because I'm a digital entrepreneur. I invested in a digital marketing course so I could afford, I could, I could make a thousand dollars easy in my sleep, sir. Oh, 10,000, 20,000. Okay. First class. Okay. Because I want you guys to understand something. When these guys see certain babes that like these girls that are boss babes. And I, I, when I say boss babes, I mean girls that are like well-established, like they could afford to buy their own Rolex. They could afford to buy themselves a Chanel bag. I want to use Des Dior. I don't know if you guys know who Des Dior is, but I want to use her as an example. Not in a bad way, in a good way, in a good way, not in a bad way, please. I, hopefully she don't see this and she'd be like, Oh girl, why are you? I just want to use her as an example because they, when they talk about themselves, they be like, oh, I attract trash men. But the trash men you attract are the, the men that you call trash are what these girls are hoping to attract, right? So Des, Des Dior can afford herself a Rolex. Best to believe the man that's trying to impress her is going to buy her an AP. Because she can afford a certain lifestyle for herself, he dare not disrespect her and give her anything less. For example, now let's say you're the babe that you originally, you fly business class on your own. On your own, naturally, on your own, you could afford to fly business class and first class. Do you think that a man that is seeing you fly first class, business class, is going to disrespect you and say, oh, you know what, come and see me in the economy, or book an Uber, when you get here, I'm going to give you the money back? He dare not. He dare not. Those type of men are not even going to approach you because they know that you're out of their league. When you get those guys that tell you, oh, book an Uber, I'm going to pay you when you come. They know what they're doing. But if they know you're the type of babe that you, listen, I, I, they see you all the time, your stories, your Instagrams, you, you driving Uber XL. They know not to play in your face because they know that it's either they get with the program or they get lost. Go talk to the girl that's looking for Uber money. Go talk to the girl that's fucking for Uber money. But over here, we're not doing any of that. Cause why? I could afford to pay Uber XL myself. So if you can't afford to send me in an Uber XL or a private sh chauffeur, next. Next, because I'm already doing it for myself. You can't be a $200 girl talking about, oh, I want a man to spend 20000 on me. You're not even spending five grand on yourself, babes. You're trying to run before you can crawl, babes. Because you could see it on you. And that's what you guys got to understand, that these men can see, people can see your level of class. And I want to also tap into this too as well. You guys know I be bouncing from top to top. Anytime I got this American honey, I'm always speaking facts. Can I get an amen? I want to tap into this Instagram thing because I want to start playing some of his recordings just so that you guys know that I'm not just talking out the side of my mouth because I'm a woman. You got to know how to package yourself online and offline. If you are currently dressing half naked and you are half naked on Instagram right now, I want you to re remove all those pictures right now. That's the reason why you're attracting the guys you're attracting. Being half naked is so common that when a guy sees that, it's like, oh, what's her price tag? What's her price tag for the night? 
You want to be respected as a woman, start packaging yourself online and offline. You do not need to be half naked on Instagram to be seen as sexy. You have your booty cheeks out, you have your nipples showing, and you're wondering why these guys are in your DMs chatting bullshit and they're not offering nothing. All pictures that you have on your Instagram right now that's you half naked, I want you to remove it. Remove it. Just, just archive it. Bestie will say anything, Bestie will never tell you a lie. Archive all those pictures that you have that's half naked with your nipples out, and I want you to start dressing very classy. And when I say classy, sexy classy. Because you can wear things that show your shape and show your butt without showing your ass. You want to start attracting wealthy, classy men that men are looking at you and saying, yo, hey, I want to fly you, I want to fly you business class to my city. I want to fly you here. Change your Instagram profile because these men are going to your Instagram profile and based off what you're showing, it's giving, oh no, she's just a regular girl. When a guy's asking you, what do you like to do for fun? Please don't open your mouth and say, I like to smoke hookah and go for brunch. Please, please. Because once he hear that, it's like, oh, she's one of those girls. She's just a girl that likes hookah and brunch. That's it. No. Say something different. Say something like, oh, I like to go bowling. I like going golfing. The reason why I'm saying this, let me play his recording so you guys can hear for yourself exactly what I'm talking about. What do you do for fun? All you do is hookah. All you do is go hookah and pass you on every night. Oh, no, she. Your mates are playing golf. Your, your fellow football friends are playing. All you do is brunch, brunch and shisha. You got brunch, like, brunch, and hookah. Mm -hmm. You don't do no Friday, you don't do Pilates, you don't do no golf, you don't do nothing, no sport, no shooting gun, no uh, gun is nothing. Hookah, 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 hookah. You don't sleep, your high, your skin uh, regime is nonsense. Come on, you wake up now, your skin on the glow. Are you mad? You want high value, my young man that has in. Uh, I can't, I can't, I'd rather be single. So. I just want you guys, and he's Nigerian, by the way, so that's why his he goes in from his UK accent and he goes into broken because he knows I'm Nigerian as well, and I would also understand his broken English. So that's why it's funny when he say rubbish. Oh, you still, I, I, it's like a um, Nigerians. We have this where we have it's called broken English where we speak in broken. It's like kind of like patois, sort of say. So him going in in and out of broken English, basically patois, was very funny to me. But um, he made a lot of valid points, and I also wanted to play the point where he made about attracting wealthy men, because I, I was like, oh, how do women attract wealthy men? He said this. The moment you start saying, what do I do to attract or talk to a guy that's above average, you do not deserve a guy that's above, above average. Why would you say that? Number one, here are, the, here are the reasons. If you were in the upper echelon of earnings, yeah, Okay, to you and I, we only we only talk because of our, our mindset. From the first time I spoke to you, I was like, "Ooh, Eva, boom, 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 boom." You're like, "Yeah, whatever you want." I'm like, "Ooh, that's my girl." Right. Like, Here's my situation with boom, 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 boom. I was like, "Ooh." So why did I say that's my girl? The mindset made me say that's my girl. It's, it's been four years now. What attracted you? What attracted me to you? It's not the mindset. True. I These motherfuckers don't have no sense, fam. These motherfuckers don't even know how to hold a fork. This okay. one, they don't hold a fork, my guys. They don't have me hold fork. Put dinner five star establishment. They cannot hold a fork. Moving on to my, to my meetings where you have tattoos everywhere. Are you mad? They don't do they will be naked, naked. When you when you Google the babe now, babes on the internet half naked. My five star put I'm walking with will not be seeing my babe half naked on the internet. That they cannot get on the ring to my five star meeting. Ah, come on now. So you see what I'm saying, guys? I recorded this conversation because I actually, I really wanted you guys to hear from a man's point of view so it doesn't seem like I'm just saying it because I'm a woman. I want you guys to really understand that when Bestie say something, Bestie has a reason as to why she's saying something. Bestie went to go do the case study, she grabbed all the facts, and I'm here sharing it with you guys. Hello. And... And this leads me into my next topic. This leads me into the next the next thing, because I actually want to talk about this, too. And I want to get everything in this one episode, because I want to give you guys... I was late on posting this episode. You know, I'm supposed to post my episodes on on Monday, but I was late posting this episode. So I want to make sure I give you guys a good episode so you guys can be like, yeah, Bestie really held it down with this episode. These men are not feminine. They are pretending. They know that when they hold women accountable... 
they are less likely to crack them eggs. So because they know that, they're being more smart. They want to act like pushovers and, oh, yeah, I'm not masculine. Oh, yeah, I'm not controlling because they know that most women want that type of guy. They pretend so they can crack those eggs. Most of them are pretending. Most of them are pretending to be pushovers. Just think about it. I want you guys to think about this. All the guys that you be like, oh, he's feminine. You be like, yeah, he's feminine. I could do this. I could do that. Eventually, he cracked those eggs. And the moment he cracked those eggs, he changed up. Because why? He was pretending. These men are smart. They're not stupid anymore. They're not, they listen to what we talk about. They hear what's going on online. That's why half of these men don't like me because they're like, girl, bitch. They're like, bitch. They look at me like, bitch, would you shut your freaking trap? You about to ruin the game. But I'm trying to help the game. I think that I've tried to make it like men versus women, but it's not about men versus women. I actually want us to come together and I actually want all of us to be happy. Married, if someone wants to be married in a relationship, if someone wants to be in a relationship, whatever situation, whatever situation you want. But I want it, and I know that it's going to be difficult for everyone, for me to change everyone because not everyone listens to me and that's okay. But the few of you that do listen to me from the beginning to the end and actually know my type of content, you know that I don't make it about men versus women. I try to make my gender be as accountable as possible to achieve the goals they're looking to achieve. I want you guys to understand this. When a man is telling you, oh, babes, please don't wear this, or babes, please don't do this, or babes, please don't do that, he is not controlling, he cares. You see, the problem with today's society is that when a man takes a stand, it, it's almost seemed as, oh, he's controlling. He's trying to control me. Oh, why does he, why is he opening his mouth? Women want masculine men, but yet they have a problem when a man is trying to be masculine and take the lead. So if you have a man that's guiding you, that's telling you, babes, don't wear this. Babes, don't go here because if you go here, I'm not going to be there to protect you. And I don't want you to wear this particular outfit to this occasion because if a guy look at you wrong or a guy does something, I'm not going to be there to protect you. He cares. He's only telling you that because he cares. My friend made a good point and I'm gonna play what he said. He said, a man is not going to water what is not in his garden. So if he knows that he has no plan for you, no plan for the future with you, he's not going to give you his opinions. He's not going to try to guide you in the right direction. If he sees you fit to be his wife, if he sees you fit to be the mother of his kids, he's going to tell you, babes, I don't want you wearing that. Babe, if you wear that to that occasion, I'm not going to be there. So please, don't take it as controlling. Take it as he's trying to be the masculine man in your life and take the lead. A man that doesn't care about you is not going to care about anything you do. Because why? His only objective is to crack your eggs and send you out the door. But if he cares about you, he's going to tell you his opinion. He's going to correct you. Stop taking correction as a man being controlling. I have to tell my gender the truth, and I will always tell my gender the truth. We take a man correcting us as controlling when it's not. It's just I'm trying to help avoid a situation that I know that can happen. We women, we are gifted with emotions. We operate on emotions. Men operate with logic. The, us operating from an emotional standpoint is our, it works in our favor. Men operating from a logical standpoint works in their favor. So when a man is taking a stand and when a man is telling you his opinion or telling you he's trying to give you direction, that doesn't mean he's controlling or he's bad. He sees you to be the wife. He sees you as a mother of his kids. So a man is only going to water what's in his garden. If he doesn't see you as someone that's supposed to be in his garden or someone that he wants to grow with, he's not going to correct you. He's going to pretend like he's feminine. He's going to pretend like a pushover until he cracked them eggs. And you guys know what I'm saying is true. Because think about all the guys that you be like, oh my God, he's this, he's that. Oh, he's not. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting over on him. The moment you, you think of, think about what I'm saying. The moment that man cracks your eggs, you see he change up and all of a sudden he's more masculine. All of a sudden he's cold. You be like, oh my God, why is he acting so cold? Because he was pretending all along. Because he knows if he tries to hold you accountable or he tries to guide you, he's not going to get laid. He's not going to crack your eggs because why? He knows, men already know that women don't like to be held accountable. So because I know that I have no plans for that girl that I want to crack her eggs, I don't care about what's happening in her life. I don't care about correcting her. My only objective is to be likable so I can crack her eggs and send her out the door. And the moment he cracked them eggs, 
what happens? He gets cold. Am I lying? You know I say anything but a lie. Think about, I want you to start, as I take my sip, ponder on what I'm saying. Now I want to play my friend's recording so you guys can see that this is from a man's point of view, that Bessie's not lying. Because I, like I like to have backup. This is my backup. I like to have backup. I have an argument about that. I have an argument about that. The problem is, is that you can say what you're saying because you're a masculine man. The yeah. men nowadays are not as masculine and they don't want to lead. Like, in order for a woman to feel like she can un unite with you and trust you, you have to be masculine to a certain extent. Let, 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 me, say, let me say something. Let me say why, why you think, why, why are they, they appear feminine? See, they're not feminine. Let me see what they're doing. What men have learned to do, yeah? Men have learned to allow this quality, this, see, not all women, this quality, particular quality of women make these complaints. Men, what men have done to these women is that these women approach you, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or when you approach them, whatever they say, men don't want to argue with you, validate you. We have no plans for your future. We have no plan for you. You're only here for sexual purposes. We will not lead you. We will not teach you. We will not direct you. We will not correct you. You're only here for sexual. We see, see, we are smart too. We've seen that you're not worth shit. So what we're doing is we don't care. You think we're not masculine? It's not, we're not for you. Mm. Our woman is the next one. Don't worry about yourself. Think. Listen. Learn this today. Yeah. No man, no man is feminine. He just does not want to show you that side that you think you're going to get from me because you're not that woman. Please don't forget this. You are not that woman. Don't forget those words. Yeah. Mm hmm. She's a woman. You heard what he said? No man is actually feminine. They just don't want to show you that side because you are not that woman. Hmm. Clock it. Clock it. These men are smart. They're hearing what we talk about. They are pretending. I'm so glad you guys can hear from a man's point of view so you know Bessie don't tell you no lies. I want you guys to start listening to me when I speak. Cause it's gonna seem like oh Bestie's just saying this because she's a no Bestie don't Bestie really goes out and do the case study and make sure I'm telling you guys facts. I don't call myself Bestie next door for no reason. Clock it. Come on, come on. And before I play this recording, you guys like I. As I'm telling you guys this information about this, then you know I'm definitely not lying to you guys about that digital marketing course. That's all I have to say. I'm gonna leave that up to you. You guys know I say anything but a lie. That digital marketing course will literally teach you all the skills you need to run a digital business and be successful at it. You're going to learn digital skills to always make money. Marketing equals money. Followers, being an influencer does not equal money, marketing does. And you do not need to have a huge following to make money. There are people right now that are millionaires and they only have 10,000 followers, 5,000 followers, 2,000 followers. Followers do not equal money, marketing does. And I'm gonna play the recording. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Once, I, once I did the masculine thing, she doesn't like me anymore. When you hold accountable, they no longer like you. So men don't want to be masculine for those particular women. There's a type don't do masculinity for. It's the one that you love that you correct. Don't forget this. When we love you, we correct you. When we think you're special, we correct you. When we see a future for you, we correct you. Ah, this one's going to be mother to my children. I'm going to correct her. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, me and Ava since 2020. Ava is in my life. That's my G. I'm going to correct her. Ava is angry or not, I'll correct her. That's my baby. Yeah. If that was not my G, I'm not correcting her. But Ava will go and think, this guy's masculine. He's just such a pushover. Waste man. Me and I will laugh. Tell me what you want. It doesn't affect me. That's your business. So now you understand the notion of they're not masculine. See, men will correct you. Your friends will correct. All your friends, a man, man, tell you this girl, that girl. Don't worry. You think we're not masculine? We're masculine. You don't want to waste my time on you. I'm not wasting my time on you for. You come here with your zero mindset. I'm not wasting my time on you. I'm not correct. You don't mind. You don't mind to correct. I don't. I don't see you valuable enough to correct. I don't see you as valuable enough for me to lead you. Why am I investing in a post that's not my post? Are you okay? It's not my, I'm telling you shit, man. Stay where you are, man. Right. 
Our wife will go pick her, she will sit down. When we pick our finger, she knows what that means. We corrected her everywhere from zero to the end. You know, sometimes when a man is too masculine to a woman or judgmental or like he's like trying to correct her too much, they feel like, oh my God, he's trying to control me or they feel some type of way. So that means that he actually cares about you because he's trying to correct you. Yes. You, I ain't correct you if I don't love you. What do you think this is? I want to fast forward it so you guys can hear the ending part of what he said. If I'm seeing a chicken here in my compound, which means my vicinity, so which means a woman in my vicinity, if I see that chicken, uh, that chicken is moving mad to the fox's head, foxes. If I care about that chicken, that chicken, I mean, they feed them. Hey, come here, come here. Don't go there. Fox, there. Same way of don't go there, don't go there. Your, your character is going to lead you astray. I'm correcting you. Chickens, leave me alone. You're controlling me. I am now. Go into that fox mouth now. That's exactly what is with character. As you're doing what you're doing, my baby girl, slow down. Mm -mm, you ain't finna do that. You're wondering why, why, why? You're thinking no more than me because you're a human being like me. But for this, I'm the man. I'm the masculine man that God has blessed to be the leader. It actually gives me vision. Mm. And it actually gives me vision that you cannot have. You're mm. emotional. You're going to go and cry. Me, I can't cry. I'm a soldier. I'm the one in this house, but I'm the boss here. What you see, I can see. Let me be leader. Mm. What I say, you sit down, sit down. And see, if you only go and do what you want to do, it, you can get hurt. You understand? But you're not going to listen to that. You get hurt with, oh, all these men in my life are not, not uh, that they don't know us direct. They're not men. And uh, let me do people myself. And see, if, if I told you, you told me I'm controlling them. True. I'm telling you now, men, they will not let you ever. Misbehave where your where your white guys are. Wait, yeah? what did you say? You said men won't what? I, just, I didn't hear that. Men won't what? Men, men will not correct you. Mm. A man does not, co does not correct what is not his to take care of or control. Oh, oh, guys, I hope you heard what he said. My gender, open your ears and listen. A man will not correct what is not his to take care of. Because he's correcting you does not mean he's controlling. It means he cares about you. Hmm. Clock it. A man, A man not correct mm -hmm. what is not his. Not control the safety what who is not his we do not want our plans that are not in our garden so if you want to be everywhere want to be free to do as you please you're not, you're not in our garden anymore now you're in the world's garden let what do you let it go be free don't come across our podcast that we are not come to we're not leading we can't lead you we cannot live what we can't control control means direction control does not mean uh, uh block your life control means direct control means lead path look at the road i'm, I'm actually looking at the road right now road has pavements don't go there, don't go there, don't fall there, don't fall there. That's the control. Uh -huh. The government has led us on the road like this, pavement, off the pavement. So, yeah, drive, drive here. If you want to do hiki they will not put pavements. Pavements is the control. Men not water plants that are not in their garden. Guys, I feel like, I, I feel like I've said enough, and I just, I'm just going to leave you guys with that. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I want you guys to ponder. I really want you guys to ponder on everything that I said and everything that I played on that recording from a man's point of view. This is not a cheap guy. This is not a guy that is some random Joe. This guy has, I don't, I don't even want to share his name. I, I didn't even want to share the, the names he dropped in this recording because I wouldn't want to expose like, you know, his millionaire friends and his circle. I, didn't, I just, I, I had to like, I chopped it up because I don't want to expose him. But this is a high value man speaking. And this is my friend. This is not my husband. It's my friend. And because if, it, if it's my husband, if I, if I let my husband come on here and talk to you guys, it's going to seem like it's being biased because it's my husband. But Having a friend that's not my man, I never had any sexual relationships with him or anything like that. Literally just, sincerely, just a friend. Like, and it's not a friend like, oh, we speak every day. It's not like that. It's like a once in a, like a once in a blue. Like, the last time I spoke to him was probably like, this is the first time I spoke to him since like 2022. And I think the reason why he, we even reconnected was because he seen my whole podcast thing. That's what even made him decide to say, you know, what's up? Because I also know that, you know, when you are married and when you are in a relationship, you know, sometimes you can't say, oh, that man, you can't have a man that's a friend talking to you every single day. It, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not like, oh, I speak to him every single day. We're on the phone every day. It's not like that. We just like, you know, I have men friends that I just talk to once in a blue that's like, oh, you know, check in. Hey, what's up? And then we have these conversations because I also ask him, are you taking are you you know are you in a relationship and then he they always go into this whole thing of why and he went to this whole thing as to why 
He also talked about a story, and I don't know if... I, I wanted to play the story, but I feel like it's a little bit long. Let me just summarize it for you guys. He had a girl. So he told me that a lot of these wealthy men, they, they usually pay girls to go with them to networking events because girls that they know may not know what to say. He told me that he took this girl to a networking event, and, you know, it just didn't go well. So I want you guys to understand something. I want you guys to understand packaging yourself. I want you guys to understand that you shouldn't be looking for a wealthy man. You need to become a wealthy woman. When you become a woman that's wealthy, a woman that has her own her own things going on, I promise you, a guy with money is going to spoil you 10 times because now it's like, welcome to our club. Money likes money. Don't listen to these babes, these babes that say, oh, well, when a guy knows I have money, he don't want to give me money. Mm, mm, that man barely had any money anyway. But, uh, but a man who truly has money, I'm talking about money where he give you $1,000 just to go on a date with him, $2,000, he's not going to care that you have your own, you're making money. All he cares about is being able to take you to networking events to make him look good. Not only do you look good, but you sound good. You know what to say. You are mentally stimulating. So don't, all the girls that be like, oh, when I tell them I have my own money, they don't want to give me money. Uh, real, real men that have money. They appreciate women that have money because that means that you're thinking. So now they know that, okay, well, she can meet my other millionaire friends because she has something she's doing. She has something to talk about. She's not just a beauty, a pretty face that's like, oh, looking for my money. Yeah, I'm going to give her money. I'm going to spoil her. Of course, I'm going to buy her Chanel bag. She already has a big Chanel bag, but I'm going to buy her a Hermes bag. I'm going to buy her an AP. I'm going to buy her this because she's welcome to my class. Understand this, and I'm going to leave you guys with this. Money likes money. And I've seen it with my own eyes in real life. A lot of people that come on here and give you guys dating advice, they tell you guys things, but they don't really live real life shit. I see shit in real life. And one thing I can tell you that I can say and beat my chest and say that is facts that I've seen with my own eyes that I live in, money likes money. Invest in yourself. Invest in learning skills to make you money. You're going to see what I'm talking about. When you become the woman that's making her own money, that's doing her own thing, you know, but it's not from a masculine standpoint, it's from a feminine standpoint, like, you know, you make your own money, but you're not a boss baby and feel like you don't need a man, you'll realize that when you go to all these nice restaurants and when you go to all these places, everything is free. Everything is free because you've gotten yourself to that level. So now it's more so of like, welcome into my club. But when you're that babe that, oh, I don't want to make money because guys don't give me money because I make my own money. Bullshit. You're only going to stay at this level. You're only going to stay at this level. You're only going to attract the guys that can only give you $500, $1,000. But when you can afford that yourself and you afford to put yourself in certain places, you could afford to go to certain tournaments, certain places, trust and believe. As you're making your own money, when you go out, everything around you is going to be free. Yes, yes, people are going to have the argument of, well, when I don't have money, I still get half fun for free. Yes, of course. But I'm talking about there's a different level of class. Because now you're going to Miami. We're not talking about having fun in your city. Now you're going on a vacation and the guy's not feeling like, oh my God, well, I'm flying her first class. I got to sleep with her because she don't got her own shit. So she ain't. They try to bring on your morals. But when they know that, oh, she could afford to put her own self in a hotel. She could, she's knowledgeable. I actually want to sit down and talk to this girl. We're in that, guys, understand this. We're in 2024. We're in the era where men are now looking past that physical aspect. Yes, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. I love that because there's so many beautiful women. But what do you, what comes out of your mouth? What are you thinking about? Are you actually in tune? Are you actually in well informed? That's what guys with money are now being more attracted to. A good looking girl who's well informed and mentally stimulating. That's what you guys got to understand. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. If you're listening to me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to me from, thank you for listening. If you're watching here on YouTube, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And you guys know the rest. Until we meet again.